YouTube world. Welcome back to Live Your Style. I'm Shara. If you're new, today we will be talking about a topic that I have become all too familiar with, and that is how to live and survive in a very small space. Over the past few years, I have lived in a basically, I think like 350 square foot studio apartment back in San Diego before I got married. And then when we got married, we moved up here and our current apartment is about 600 square feet. So though it got bigger, it is still teeny tiny, very small. And boy, can we not wait to move one day. But I have a question for you guys. Leave me in the comments below if you guys rent or if you guys own. I've got lots of tips and tricks for you guys, but before I spill the tea on all the ways that you guys can improve living in teeny tiny spaces, why don't you guys hit the subscription button if you have not yet subscribed. And if you guys don't follow me on Instagram, why not? Go over to Instagram, it's at Shara Stevens. Give me a follow and I post a lot of stuff throughout the week, whether it's just like behind the scenes stuff for work or personal stuff or even tutorials and cool light fixture hacks and things like that. So if you're not following, go check it out. And if you guys are a part of the small space gang, like I am, give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. First tip to surviving and thriving in a small space is to decorate using light colors. So whether that's paint colors or just like large pieces of furniture, you wanna select color patterns that are gonna be on the lighter and brighter side. And that's only because although dark feels cozy, it also can feel cramped. It can make a space feel really small and shrunken a little bit. And it just doesn't give you all of the maximized space and appearance of space like a lighter white or maybe even light gray color might do. Also lighter colors reflect light better. They don't absorb light and so when the light does shine through, your windows, you just feel instantly airy and fresh, like behind me in my little apartment here. You'd never know, this is a teeny room, would ya? It's pretty teeny. And if you wanna do something other than white, I recommend going for like a light, cool gray tone. Stay away from the warmer colors, because often warmer colors can also be on the darker side. They start to feel a little bit more like it's all enclosing in. Like our bedroom is gray but we chose a lighter, cooler gray and not a darker, warmer gray, if that makes sense. And then again, when you guys have furniture, your furniture in the space is probably gonna be the biggest item in the room. So you wanna make sure that you're selecting color palettes, even if it is wood, go for a lighter color wood as opposed to a dark espresso wood, or go for a lighter color sofa as opposed to a black leather sofa. Just all of those little things kind of allow the room to open up, feel bigger, more spacious, and you'll forget that you live in a shoebox. The second way to survive living in a very small space is to create zones in your home. So for me, I have one large area here. It does serve as three different purposes. So I have my office, our living room, and our dining room. And the way that I really kind of differentiate these spaces is by using rugs. It'll ground that area and it kind of sections it off without putting a big divider in the room that might make the room feel smaller. Also, turning furniture against each other. So my sofa I have facing distinctly the TV in an L shape. The back of the sofa is directly up against where my office starts. The fact that there is that differentiation of space here allows me to kind of show that this is one room and this is another, even though it's all in the same room. In the dining room, I use other means to separate the dining room from the living room by using like a light fixture or also using a rug, but having a light fixture over a piece of furniture kind of identifies it as like, this is its own little space. By the way, I got my dining room light fixture at Target and I will link it below. It is so cute and they have a bunch of other ones, so check them out. Number three, take the doors off of your cabinets and your closets. Okay, so if you guys remember, like right when we started doing that series of how to make the most of your small space, I actually did not have any closet doors on my closet behind me, and that was intentional, mostly because we don't have a lot of space. When you have a door opened, it usually hits something else. In order to walk through the walkway, you gotta close the door first, and it's just kind of a hassle. So we decided not to do doors. However, we don't have screens on our windows, and so a lot of dust was coming in, and I kinda got sick of my clothes always being so dusty. So we did end up putting doors on them, but they do get in the way all the time, and that's just something I've chosen to live with because I would rather have an intrusion of a door than dusty clothes. 
You know what I mean? Also, when it comes to kitchen stuff, if you guys remember a long time ago, back in my old studio apartment in San Diego, I took the cabinet doors off of my kitchen little cabinet that I had because I wanted to remove the intrusion of those cabinet doors coming into the space. But also, I kind of played as an accessory moment because I was able to decorate with my dishes. It encourages you to keep everything clean, which is important and good if you are not normally tidy. It will keep you on your toes and keep you on it. If you have a really small bedroom and you're not able to open up your closet door without it hitting maybe a piece of furniture or things like that, I highly recommend take the doors off. If you're renting, store them in a garage or store them in the closet if you can or just put them in a shed outside if you can. Wrap them up first so they don't get ruined. And then I would hang a curtain. So you can put a really light colored curtain, put it on a tension rod right at the top. And if you need to open up, you know, you don't wanna have your closet maybe showing for everyone to see. You just have a nice little curtain there and it doesn't intrude when you move it to the left or move it to the right. Kinda opens up the space. Number four, invest in beautiful multifunctional pieces. So whether that's gonna be an ottoman that has extra storage space or in your kitchen, like me, I have a really small kitchen. We opted for open shelving, like what you see behind me, and I use my dishes as not only things we use to eat on, but also ways to decorate and accessorize the space. So whether that is a cup or a plate, it also could be a fancy bowl, or even on my stove, I have my black and white teapot that I think is really pretty. And also my Staub black metal cast iron pot. Those, both of those things, obviously I could store them in a cabinet, but then it would take space of other things that maybe aren't as pretty that would then have to be on the counter. So maybe the tip is look for things that are actually really good to look at, pretty to look at, and have those things get priority that if something has to go on your counter, it's gonna be something that you can kind of decorate in a, in a little corner or vignette with. And then things that are more practical or just everyday items, you can put those in a cabinet or some sort of enclosed situation in your kitchen. I also decorate with my cookbooks. I have them nice and neatly stacked up and then I always have one cookbook that is open in a little cookbook stand on my little island over here and obviously very functional quick access if I need them but I do think that they look nice so instead of putting them in a counter taking up real estate there put them on top of the counter and allow them to decorate the space number five mirrors are your new best friend besides vacuums mirrors are really great they make a space feel a lot bigger than they are they kind of create an optical illusion to where you think the room is continuing on they also reflect light so it brings more light and brightness into the space and overall, it just allows for your space to feel like it doesn't just end where the wall is, it kind of continues, which is a great feeling. You guys know in my bedroom, I have four different mirrors actually, um, one on each wall and two actually on one of the walls. And that kind of, even though they're smaller mirrors, when I do, when you, your kind of peripheral or whatever kind of catches them, it takes your eye into a further dimension. So it just, even if it's not super obvious, the little mirrors still do help. We did this in Elena's apartment. You remember she had a circle mirror above her sofa. That was really great. I got a circle mirror up here by our entry. Also Alicia and Ashley's entryway, we put a ginormous circle mirror there. That really widens the space and that room, that hallway gets a ton of light. That was a really neat project to kind of see the magic of mirrors take shape. And then also, I don't know if you guys have watched my mom's videos, but when you walk into my mom's house, the entire like wall right when you walk in is a ginormous framed mirror and it looks like it's a big archway. It's kind of like you think you're seeing like someone who looks kind of a lot like you walking at you but it's really you walking at a mirror and it truly does give the, the optical illusion that you're walking into a very large home. But if you can't afford to put an entire wall full of mirror in space, just get smaller mirrors and use them frequently throughout your house. And last but not least, number six, get in the habit of the 10 minute tidy. You wanna make that like a thing that you die by, that you live by, that you do everything by. Because if you can learn how to clean up your quick little teeny tiny space in five to 10 minutes, you will be so grateful that that is a part of your routine. Little small spaces can get so dirty and chaotic and messy so much faster than big spaces because if one thing is out of order, it takes up a lot of room because you don't have that much room to spare. So leaving your jacket out, leaving your purse in the wrong spot, putting some random papers on the table and a Coke can and I'm just looking around my apartment, a purse and a hanger and a random robe and dog toys. 
All of those things, I could take 10 minutes, clean them up, put them away, and my house would feel spotless. But with those little, small details still hanging around, it feels dirty, it feels chaotic, it feels overwhelming, and it does not take that long to stay on top of it. If you don't stay on top of it, it will become overwhelming and it will take an hour or so to get everything put away and decluttered. So if you can do it 10 minutes a day, you'll be very happy. And if you do the trick in the kitchen where you take off all your cabinetry, that will also help you keep clean and tidy because you don't want it to look crazy. So put yourself in positions where you have to stick to it and you challenge yourself and you learn how to keep things clean. And I'm telling you, it will make you happier. Okay guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and got lots of great tips. If you guys want more tips on small space living, I will put the playlist link below. You guys can check out a series I did like right when we got married, like two, a little over two years ago. It was making the most of our small space and I kind of walked you through each of the little areas in this place and how we maximized it and made it the best that it could be. So check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and leave your comment on if you rent or if you own. And I will see you guys next week. <laughs>